Greetings! <laughs> On this week's episode, we have Christine Aller, change strategist and mastermind facilitator. Yes. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the celebration. We know you could be anywhere, so the fact that you are here with us, we appreciate the heck out of that. As you can see, sense, feel, experience, you can tell I am not alone. I have an amazing <laughs> guest you can already hear. She goes by the name of Christine Aller. Christine is a change strategist and a mastermind facilitator. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the celebration. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Oh, thank yeah. you. I really appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Can you break down one of those terms for us? Make them personal for you. What's a change strategist? What's a mastermind? Okay, well, mastermind group is a group of master minds who okay. come together because we can't do anything of significance alone. And we need community and we need support. And while I have a lot to give as a coach, when you're in a room that's also full of really motivated, proactive, mm. smart people who have their own life experience to bring to the table, it just makes it an exponential experience, mm. which is why I love groups. And so I've been facilitating and coaching many different kinds of mastermind groups for 17 years, wow. every single month consecutively with no break. That's for amazing. 17 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. It's my absolute favorite thing to do. What do you love about it? I love watching the light bulbs go mm. on behind people's eyes because when that happens, that can be the start of a change of their whole life, perhaps. I also love watching each of the members energize one another and inspire mm. one another. And I love that there's a feeling that happens then amongst the group that's bigger than me. That's amazing. So I, I hold many of them in my house and every time it ends and everybody is finally gone, I'm just sitting in this room going, I'm so fortunate to steep in mm. the energy of this room that has held so many wonderful people. That's such a blessing. It is a blessing. It's, <laughs> I'm totally blessed. So you have yeah. to be a mastermind already to join? Well, in, in your own mind, you have to be a mastermind. You have to be someone who, in this particular group that I have now called the Inspired Action Mastermind, uh, it's for creative professionals. So you have to be someone who's definitely up to something okay, and who is proactive and wants to contribute to the group. I describe it as we're around a campfire okay, and I'm not building you a bonfire. We're all bringing logs mm. each time. And some, you don't always have to add a log to the fire, yeah. but I, but in order for it to warm us all, we have to each bring logs. It's not a passive I always experience. bring some logs, but you know. Yes. Yeah. Or I bring the kindling, I should say, and the fuel to start the fire, but we need some logs. Is so there, people bring their issues and their questions and their shares and stuff like that. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. Is there an interview process? Is there like a checklist that you have to get in or what? Usually how it works is that people are referred. Okay. by the members. So when I get an application, it's usually pre-qualified on that level. And then I'm, what I'm looking for when I decide I want the texture of the group to be a certain way. Yeah. So I have to look for any red flags that I think might not fit for the person because I don't yeah. want them to have a bad experience either. Um, and then I'm looking like is there some development in their business already? Like, can I find you on the web? Like, mm. you know, and then sort of, I've, I've been doing this so long that I can read an application and hear the read between the lines yes. of it. And then if I have any questions or I'm uncertain, I'll just call them and we'll have a little pre call. But sometimes it's like, Oh, well you're from her and you, yeah, you're in like, nice. you know, the I mean, referral. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, word of mouth, that's the most amazing way to build a business mm. because it just, you don't have to really worry about like, you know, someone here just to stir the sh shit, you know, yes. stir the pot, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you can swear. It's okay. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> well then. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> here we go. Now that the door is open. Yep. <laughs> What's a change strategist? Okay. So 
technically a change strategist is what I do is I help people make shifts in life, significant shifts. And sometimes that's to an entirely new direction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's to a new level or sometimes it's to grow kind of a portion, but also it could be where they want to make a change to the texture of their life. Like Mm -hmm. they've, many of the people come to me, their lives are very complex, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard sometimes when you're like, I want to do this or I feel called to do this, but how am I going to do it? Because all this and I don't want to rock the boat. And (laughs) so it's really about parsing that out and finding the knots and then helping them untie the knots to that so that they can even just shift the way they are experiencing their life. Mm. So sometimes it can be very goal oriented and sometimes it can just be like, my life doesn't feel like me. And how do we get that back into alignment? And so it's all about change. And then I'm just extraordinarily good at strategy. So change strategist. Yeah. (laughs) What is change when you're using the word change? What does that mean to you? I think of it as something that's Mm self-directed. Sometimes it can be unexpected and life can just be like, guess what? (laughs) We're changing (laughs) right now. So it can be unexpected. But most of what I work with are people who are self-directing a change. And when I think of that word, it's it's another way I would then define it would be a self-directed evolution. Mm. They want to evolve. They want to expand in some way. I work with people who are like, I want to reach my full potential. I want (laughs) to feel all of what I can be or do on this earth while I'm here. That's amazing. Yeah. Would you say what relationship is change, transformation, evolution? Are they different words? All the same word? Oh, it depends on how you define it. So they can all mean the same thing and they each have their subtle differences. I would say, depending on the, the circumstances or the context in which you're using the word in the work you do. Change versus transformation. I think I use the word change versus like transformational coach, which change strategist, transformational coach, life coach. It's all kind of the same. Um, Transformation for some people is not the word that resonates. Everyone kind of like change. I can, I want to make a change. It's more colloquial. Transformation for some people like, well, like, hold on, we don't want to, you know, I just want to make a little shift here. Yes. So I think sometimes it can be off-putting and it can feel a little like it's used very often with a lot of other woo-woo language around it. And I, while I myself am quite (laughs) woo-woo, it's, I think all of this can also be spoken of in very, you know, plain ways without all the, that stuff, because I don't want that to get in the way of what we're really doing. I'll meet you at whatever level of the woo, including none woo. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. Maybe to be more specific for Mm -hmm. me. So I'm thinking of that there must be a process to it. And is there incremental changes that lead to a transformation or what, and you don't even have to use the language I am, but what is the process of change work. Okay. For me and the way I do it and the work I do, there's no formula and there's no seven steps and there's no little track I put you on. Okay. Each client is different. Each life is, uh, you know, very unique as far as the circumstances and what they want to do. That said, very often when people think of change, What they're desiring is to see their external circumstances different. Mm. I want you to be different. I want this job to be different. Mm. I want my job to just be a different job. I just want what I see and how I interact with the world to be different. I want to change this, but we have no power over that. Yes. So if there is a process, it is that I, the work we do is very interior Mm. because what's amazing is that you can literally change your life just by making internal changes without any of your external circumstances changing. Mm. And yet if you do make these kind of changes 
everything starts to change. That's the amazing power of how that works. It's like, you want this to change. We'll start making tweaks here and it'll feel like nothing's happened. And then all of a sudden people are interacting with you differently. You have a different perspective shift on, you know, and so internal work, and that could be, um, like mostly it's around the stories that we're telling ourselves and the mindset shifts and, and having a new perspective, but not just a new perspective. I'm also, what I'm really gunning for is mental flexibility. Mm. There's never one way to look at it. There's this way and this way and this way and this way. And if you have a flexible mind, it's not just about like solving a problem by looking at all the angles. It's also, you can say, Oh, this person has that perspective and I can honor that. And that person has that perspective. So we just, Mental flexibility, if, if we can cultivate the, the, that, a lot of things would start to, I think, lo- loosen up in our rigid culture yes. <laughs> and the rigidity of our culture. I resonate with a lot of what you're saying, yeah. and I'm sure our folks listening are as well. How do you cultivate a mental flexible mind? I think where it starts for a lot of people, if it doesn't kind of come naturally to yeah. them, and sometimes it'll come naturally in one area yes. of their life, like, you know, engineers and, and artists, and they have a lot of mental flexibility in one area, but they've never necessarily applied it to their interactions with the public yes. or their relationships or thinking about their own life issues. So you can, you can have it in one area, but haven't really cultivated it holistically. But where it starts is... To acknowledge that you're telling yourself a story. Mm-hmm. I can't do this. This is this. Because that's where we get trapped. Oh, there's one way and it's this way and I'm trapped and I have, there's no other way. So it's like, okay, well, what's the story you're telling around this? Now, what's the opposite story? Yeah. Because that story, the opposite story, is just as valid as the story you're telling. True. It's all bullshit. <laughs> it's all <laughs> bullshit. So you can, there's one that makes you feel better probably, one makes you feel worse. Now, if there's two stories, and you didn't even know this one existed, I bet there's a third story. There yes. could be a fourth story. I can, where I can blow people's minds is like, I can give them six stories for the, the scenario. Like, we could look at it this way or this way or this way or this way. It's like, and once you start going up, then the story you're telling yourself kind of loses it. Now it's one of six stories. Even less power if it's one of 12. Yes. It's like, oh, okay. Now I'm just, now I just pick which story. So if I'm hearing you correctly, it's usually that we come up with one story, oftentimes uh, leaning towards a doom and gloom story, and we believe that this one must be true without having a imagination that there's other ones that might be just as valid it feels true because you've had it for a while and you've sent your mind out to fetch proof you collect proof all day story is true story is true story is true i had 16 pieces of proof today but that doesn't mean anything that Mm -hmm. just means you're not sending your mind out to fetch proof on a different story and when you first try to do that your mind's like oh but I built you this big pyramid of proof of this. Or do I have to? And you're like, yes. And then it's like, fine, here's one piece of proof. And if you can find one, you can find two, find three. Yes. And then you build this other pyramid that, that really makes this story feel as real as the other story. And to me, that's why affirmations, they're a tool. But they don't work very often because there's no... It's like your mind just calls bullshit. Mm. Money is coming to me. Money is coming to me. That bullshit. I have this other story that's much more real and we have much more proof around. Mm. So it's like, well, you can't. So you can't, when the story comes into your mind, you can't just bat it away with a little affirmation because it'll just come back. You need to replace it with a story that has as much power. And you can create that. How do you create that with as much power? You don't just craft a story of like, I'm a it it has to be like where can we start where it feels true Mm. where does this where could this feel as true as this other thing and sometimes this story build feels more true once you weaken the other story so that's where we usually start it's like well let's pull this thing apart and really look at it and like (laughs) and then when you start to go okay well that yeah all right there's not a lot of legs over here then you don't have to build as heavy of this other opposite story you're like okay well what could be the other way to look at it? What would make you feel better? And that's where I'm, that's the purpose of this. It is hard enough to get yourself out of bed these days in the morning. <laughs> of like, okay, let's go. Another one. Whew. 
that takes energy. And you might as well tell yourself stories that make you feel good because that's mm-hmm. how you're going to get out of bed and go do the thing that's going to help everything, you know? So does the thought create the feeling or does the feeling create the thought? What's uh, I keep hearing you say you think something and then you feel it. You can go out and find people who will tell you the feeling creates the thought. And then there's a whole school of thought that says thoughts first, then feelings. Yeah. I have seen it work more where the thought is what creates the feeling because I could literally say to you, you're as big as a school bus. If that insult has no triggering for you, you're like, okay, that thought did not create any feeling. But if I say something like that to you and it's like, (gasps) boo, that thought, and then you start to the feelings. And then if that, thing I said to you fits in the groove of a story you already have, mm. then you're stoking. Then you'll start to mm. stoke those feelings long after I've gone. And then you're just in your room. I'll be like, how dare she? And I'm not with the Yeah. Would you say story is the same thing as identity? That this is the, if this is the identity I believe I am? I would say your identity is a collection of the stories, mm. some of which you've told yourself, some of which other people have told about you or to you that you've chosen to believe. Because what's fascinating is that your life, like if I was to sit here and tell you, well, Tom, when you know, I was born and then this happened, if I was to tell you the story of my life and how my parents are and my relationship with my sister, yes, I'm just pulling together a collection of moments that I felt were significant and that I remembered And each of those moments, those people, if you got them in a room, they're like, I don't remember saying Mm. that. I don't know. Those aren't the stories they pulled. Now, they would have stories about me of like, well, one day she did this. And so they'd make their little movie. So we're we're pulling each frame of our little movie together. And then we watch the movie again and again. Mm. But you can loosen that up of like, yes, your mom said something to you that one day when you were 12. And it hurt. And it was significant for some reason. And you've held on to it. But it's one of many, many of which you've forgotten. Many of which could have, she could have said a hundred good things and you remember this one thing, you know? (laughs) So you can at least acknowledge that the story you tell about your identity or who you are, you've created that. You're the editor of that. So you can re-edit if you want to. Have you seen Inside Out? Oh, yeah, I loved it. So it was like, there you go. Yeah. I was thinking much. of those ending scenes where she kept focusing on the grief or the sadness and then saw how the sadness, oh, if you look at the bigger picture, led to happiness and her parents taking care of her. It was so good. And I loved it so much how the movie incorporated sadness. It's not something you just shove <laughs> over there. You know, it's like, it's you can't. You have to have both sides. I'm a big believer that most things and most concepts are neutral. Mm. Pride, greed, selflessness, selfishness. It's neutral concept. There's a light side to it and a dark side to Mm. it, to everything. And then that's a spectrum on the dark side, spectrum on the light side. So we're told in our youth a lot of things good, bad, that kind of right, wrong, yeah. black and white language, you know, so you, they're trying to direct you in the ways that they want you to behave to make life easier for them. Mm. So as an adult, we get to start questioning all of that. Mm. How do you question something? What do you mean? How do you question something? You said as, as I just as question a, you as, about the question. As adults, we get to start questioning that. What does that look like? This is interesting. This is a lot of the work I'm doing right now around women. And I have this um, series called Subversive Thoughts Mm. for Modern Women. And it's all about questioning the rules that you feel you have to live by and where those rules came from, who gave you the rules, what would happen if you didn't... (laughs) follow them anymore (laughs) are there other ways of being what does it mean to rock the boat because you know when you go against the rules you start to rock the boat and we're all trained to be such good girls and follow the rules and it's that whole kind and so many people are still living under 
rules and sometimes rules are um, connected to this idea of morality, but morality and rules, two different things, but they get connected, fused together. And so you feel like it's just inescapable and, and you, how could you live a different way or what would happen if you let, you know, and sort of like, well, let's think about it. I'm like, you don't have to do anything. Yeah. This is not prescriptive. (laughs) This is just, let's think about it. It's really about, and it's what I love about what you're doing with the celebration is that you're just like, here's something to think about. Yeah. Cause I am a really firm believer that once you've lived and gotten to adulthood yeah and even even then i just believe like as souls we've got the answers i don't need to tell you how to live i can make some suggestions go well other people found this helpful or maybe try this but you've got it so i don't need to figure it out but i can introduce an exploration Mm -hmm that might spark something naturally inside yes. you and then you're off to the races and then we can talk about it yes. if like things are starting to bubble but i really think that you know especially for mature adults it's literally be a letting your mind go to places it hasn't yet gone mm. to it's all there you know what are that sounds like an amazing course um what was it subversive Thoughts Subversive for... Thoughts for Modern Women. It's not a course right now. It's just, um, it's a limited edition podcast series Ooh. where I investigate the seven biggest energy leaks where women en- leak out a lot of their energy. So it's around like being of service, mm. loyalty, um, receiving, identity shifts, success and self-sabotage. And then there's other ones that I can't remember. <laughs> Have you ever had a chance to have any conversations or workshops with women around this one? Well, that's what it's about. I actually, the the segments came out of, you know, I invited women over mm-hmm. and it's a conversation. Ooh. And there are women of different ages, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, all very accomplished women. And um, we, anonymous, so their names aren't used. You don't, that's not what's important. Yeah. And we talk, we explore the energy leak around being of service. Mm. Well, what does that mean? And, and you know, I, I've written essays that kind of go along with each one. And then I also offer some of my perspective in it. But it's not me talking. It's not me expounding on it. Yeah. It's an explorative conversation. Where, where can folks listen to that? Because I don't want you to have to repeat everything that you say there. But I'm so interested. It'll be up on iTunes eventually. But you can... Always find it at my website, christineoller.com slash subversive. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it sounds like a big tool of yours or a favorite tool of yours for change is conversation. Yeah. Because if it's not conversation, it's a lecture. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, was, I, was ju- I just ended a client of mine who had actually done, I have a program called Your Leap Year, where I take a client through a whole year. We just worked together for a year. And this was her fourth one. And we just ended our time together. And I said, I was saying to her, you know, what I really enjoyed about working with you is it was always a team effort Mm. in that it was a dialogue and a conversation because she would push back on some stuff. And sometimes we'd go with her Thing and I'm and it was like okay you're right that worked out killed you but you know it's like okay let's regroup you know so she because she was really smart and really talented and so it was that and it didn't it felt so I told her I was saying to her I was always super excited for our sessions together yeah. because it was like oh we're in it together and it's not a dispensary where I'm just like dispensing because how bo- I probably wouldn't be a coach if that's all it was because I get super bored yes yeah what to you is, is there a difference between maybe a workshop where people go through exercises and facilitating a conversation? Well, there are two different things. And as far as like the facility, I'm going to answer that taking the facilitating a conversation in the coaching context. Okay. Like what's the difference between 
going to a workshop, even if it's a very experiential one yeah. where you're like in it and doing and there's yes. other people. That kind of one. That's versus like a coaching dialogue. Yeah. With a group. Oh, with a group. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's the same difference. Whether you're doing the workshop, because I've led workshops and stuff. Yes. So you do the workshop versus one-on-one sessions or a, like a mastermind. Yes. A mastermind. The difference is application. Mm. I'm not in the information business. I got stuff to say. I've said it in different ways. Yeah. But what I'm really in is in the application business. The people who I work with are super smart. They've bought the courses, they've read the books, they've built things on their own. And in their quest to make a change and to expand and to improve, they're reading more and course. But it's like, okay, okay, you have all the knowledge. Yes. And that's part one. But if you can't find the space, make the space to integrate it into your life and not just integrate it, but in a strategic order so yes. that it maximizes it and builds upon the next if you can't apply it to your life, then it's just going to be like gathering, 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 spinning, spinning, spinning. Yeah. So I am like, let's integrate some of this stuff. Let's actually take the action. Let's figure this out and, and do it and use it out in the world. Yes. And let's shift in here. Because some people know the inner stuff they need to work on, but they just haven't done it. And what the difference is, with a workshop, you're in it. It's a, it's an experience. And some workshops can be like this, but when you're working with a coach, either in a good facilitated situation or one on one, you are stepping out of your life. You're mm-hmm. stepping back from the details, down in the details of your daily life, and you're going up to what I call the big picture perspective. Because it's only up here that we can make the decisions and make the plans and see things differently and look at things from different angles. Because when you are down in the details, yes. it's reactionary, it's execution of the plan, but it's really hard to make changes down here and kind of just, yeah, up here. But very often at, at the end of the year is when people pull back. Okay, <laughs> let me look. And maybe at their birthday. Well, that ends in a zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, only the ones end in zeros. You know, woo. And, or when life throws them a, curveball it's like whoa they're knocked on their their bum uh but if you're zooming out all the time there's a a more breathing room you create Mm. more breathing room in your life and you're able to be proactive rather than reactive yeah so when someone works with me every time we meet every time we talk it's like we're up here Power we'll talk about how to then go down here, but yeah. they know how this, they live down here. I don't need to go down there with you, Yes, but, but we can, yeah, make the plans for that. Yeah. So we've used the word coach a lot. Mm-hmm. So let's talk to I'm the- I'm totally f- a coach. Yes. I just call myself a change strategist. Yes. Because there's 1,000 life coaches. <laughs> That's where I wanted to go. <laughs> let's talk to the folks who the word coach- means sna- snake oil salesman. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I love the thing about, you know, any athlete mm-hmm. that, that achieves mastery and excellence and their full potential. They never did it alone. They at least had one coach, yes. at least one, yes. if not this specialist and this specialist. So it's very American And very delusional, but very American to be like, we celebrate the lone, like, you can do this alone. You've achieved it alone. It's not pure achievement unless you did it alone. Bootstraps. Yeah, totally. But (laughs) alone, like no help with the boots. And that's ridiculous. And Mm. nothing of significance is ever built alone. And this also, this idea that's given to us, not overtly, but covertly in our education system of like, when you're out of school, you're done. Mm. It's like, you're, you don't need teachers anymore because you're an <laughs> adult, you know, and you should be able to now figure it out, yes. maybe read a book. But a, an author of a book is just a, a coach. It's yes. a guide. It's a guide. Um, so there's this ridiculous notion of adulthood means you don't need help. 
but it's so lonely and harder alone. Mm. And it's so much richer and nourishing and helpful to have help because what I love most about humanity is that none of us are a complete puzzle. Yes. We all have missing pieces. So I might need your piece to fit. Oh, yeah, that fits. We all need pieces of other people to, to make the complete. We are built to need other people. Yes. And that's got our saving grace, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Put my chips on that, you know, but I love, but I also love that. It's, so, but I am not complete. Mm. And nobody, it, I, I can say that nobody needs a coach. You're going to live a fine life. You'll have some success. You might find absolute happiness. You don't need a coach, but you might want one mm. or two or 14 <laughs> and different ones at different times. If you're interested in expanding, because there's sometimes there's knots that are you can't reach that are behind you and you need someone else to find it. Go, <laughs> you don't know what's back here, but let me tell you. Yeah. And if you can leverage someone else's expertise to the benefit of your own life, why not? Faster, man. <laughs> it's faster too. If you want to go faster, <laughs> that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Um, but why do you charge for it? Oh, it's such a good question. <laughs> Mama's got to eat. Uh, because there is an exchange that needs to happen. And I am saying I am going to show up. Not just show up with you 100%, but arrange my world so that I'm not depleted when I'm here. I can be fully present when I'm here. My brain can be, oh, you know, fed and nourished and able to be on to give the most to you. So I'm going to do all of that. But I don't know what you're going to do. So why don't you give me money as your part of the deal? And then we're meeting as equals yes. in the center. And we both have skin in the game. I have my reputation on the line. That's all I have for my business. And you've given me something of value that I can then go use to pay my coaches with, you know? <laughs> so it, it's just about having skin in the game. And there have been times I was a professional organizer for 17 years and I experimented in that business with like free and pro bono and things like that. And it was very, very rare. Mm -hmm. The situations where it was valued when it was free, mm -hmm. even though What's remarkable is people will always, always tell you, oh, I'm not waiting for free. It's like, you don't value it. We all have 800 PDFs on our computer, unread right now. Because, yeah, they're free. Yes. I read the titles. Um, it just, there's something. And if it hurts a little bit, then you pay attention. Yeah. I used to get, I used to be like, I can't believe Tony Robbins charged like $10,000 in an hour to like how dare what gives him totally I used to have that judgment and then one day I realized okay so Tony Robbins has got himself to a very high level of expertise yeah. not just in, in coaching tools but he lives in a rarefied world that is particular to people who live there and he understands the problems of that world that I wouldn't necessarily have a per perspective, a lived in knowledge of yeah. that he has. So he is able to help people in that world just cause that's where he got himself to the people in that world. $169 an hour is not going to be you're gonna <laughs> like, whatever. Okay. I'll half listen to you while I do something else. He has to find a price that makes him pay attention. Yes. That makes it hurt a little bit. So at the point that I heard about it, it was like $10,000 an hour <laughs> because to them, that's their 20 bucks, yeah. you know? And so once I realized, Oh, it's just all, it's all relative. And I learned that actually as an organizer, um, because there's, Organizers that sort of um, serve the like the celebrity clientele, and I had had a few celebrity clients, and what I realized is, 
And of course they charge more. So you're like, ooh, I want the celebrity clients. But it's a whole other world mm. because um, so people who are affluent, they have lots of help. They've mm. got the cleaning lady and they got this person, they got the masseuse. And you're just one of many, the organizer and the gardener. And it was just sort of like, it wasn't. So people who have affluence, they have a lot of help. They have the cleaning person and the gardener and the, you know, you're just the organizer. You're one of many. Yes. So you doing your thing is not that big of a deal and you do not have their full attention. So I learned quickly. I'm like, well, I, that, that's not fun. Mm-hmm. I want them to be engaged and invested. Yes. And I'm really here to get inside their head and make their world work for them. So I found my right clientele. I'm like, okay, I want people who are like, oh, my organizer's coming today. Like, this is, a, <laughs> this is a deal. And I'm going to tell my friends about it. And I'm going to be, what happened this weekend? <gasps> my organizer came. Because that's how you get referrals. That's how you get talked about. Yes. Uh, a really, really rich person who's not going to be like, my gardener came yesterday and it was amazing. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then once I found the sweet spot for the people I wanted to work with, then it was just like, okay, well, what's the price that will hurt just a little bit? Mm. And that's where I set my price. That's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Can you, without bringing any confidentiality, share any awesome stories with us of change that you've facilitated or gotten to witness? Hmm, okay, let me think about that. One of, I think because it's fresh in my mind, Mm -hmm. but the client who just worked with me for, for four years, at the beginning she came and she said, I want a new house. I want to have my first child. I want to finish the screenplay that I've had forever. And I want to do more seasons of a project that she was working on. Yeah. I'm like, of course, she wanted to do it all in a year. <laughs> <laughs> Which they all, it's like, that's part yes. of the course. No problem. And um, I'm like, okay, those are all doable. And let's go. Now, of course, we had no idea about when the baby was going to come. And the house kind of, there was possibilities that fell through and the thing, and the, but eventually got the house, moved in, finished the screenplay, finished her series in a really wonderful, like, to her satisfaction of what she gained from yeah. it. And now she's on to like 2.0 of that. Four years. But... I was able to watch and help her transition to being a new mom. Oh, wow. And how you fit. I had to, I'm like, we're pausing your year because you need to go for at least three months. You know, she was like, no, I'm going to have the baby and then I'm going to keep working. She's very type A and very ambitious. It's like, no, no, yes. we're going to pause the year. We'll continue. You'll call me in April. We'll see how it is. Um, but even just in helping someone realize and take that moment of like, this is the first time you're ever going to be a first mom, yeah. you know? And the other thing is we didn't, you know, when someone gets pregnant, you don't know how the pregnancy is going to go. Yeah. You don't know how the delivery, lots of variables. Yes. So it's hard to plan, but that doesn't mean things can't keep continuing. And my, one of my favorite things is when life kind of throws a curveball to, help people see how they can still continue through it. It doesn't mm. have to stop everything. Yes. So I got to participate in and help her become a new mom. And then, you know, the relationship with the husband can change. And it needs to be renegotiated. Yeah. And her relationship with her career needs to be renegotiated because she can't do it in the same way as she wanted to do it before. And just kind of mentally acknowledging that and embracing it and shifting and then the helping her see that projects happen in you want them to happen in perfect timing your timeline is shit your timeline is just something you make up when nothing else is going on and go be fun if it happened it's like no who cares what we want is for it to unfold in perfect timing so that when it hits it's the right time yeah and that's magic so but watching this person grow and evolve and get better equipped at 
making choices in her life and she had some, you know, rough spots that happened and getting through that. And it's just, there was a lot of success that we can look at on paper. She's definitely in a different career spot than she was before. And she has the new house and the new baby, but she's so different as a person. That's amazing. It is amazing. And it's the things that she learned and the things that she tried based on me going, do it this way. Like, try it. Just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. You know, and like the leaps and the um, experiments she did with her life. Because I'm big into like, it, life, just experiment yes, with it. Like, let's it. see what happens and then we'll change course. And just her freeing to do that, she's going to approach her life differently for the rest of her life. And there's just, it's like, what more is that? These, these interior changes is what affected everything that went on in her life. That's amazing. Is this stuff. And then, of course, you know, making plans that didn't exhaust her and that built upon one another. And a lot of the time, what I also am helping clients do, they, they hire me, but then I'm also, okay, well, you also need this help and you need some, so it's like, let's get you an assistant. Let's get you, how are we going to find the right nanny? Like yes. let's bring building a team. Cause women especially are like, I should shoulder all of this yes. and but we all need wives, you know? So, yeah, we all can use a wife. <laughs> what so, do you yeah. mean? Uh, well, I'm speaking of like the archetypal, archetypal, stereotypical wife, meaning someone who is there to support you in your going out into the world. Mm. The man goes out into the world to hunt and gather and the, and the woman stays here and does the support work. But times are changing and it's like, doing the support work and even even if you don't have a husband even if you don't have kids it's like you're going out in the world and then you have this whole life thing to do and it's like we could all use a helper yes so we all need a helper we all need someone to support us is that what you're saying yeah i think that there's this idea again coming back to like america i do it alone (laughs) why not get help you know because what as howard thurman that wonderful quote is like find what what makes you come alive and go do that. That's what the world needs. I love that quote. So if we can spend more of our energy, time, yeah, but also energy on doing our higher contributions to the world, then that's better for the world. Mm. Now, that is not to denigrate support work. Because I think everyone does support work for other people in various ways. So, and there's, the world needs that component too. Yes. We're all just like all out there all the time. So it's, but there's no, if you are able to have someone come in and clean your house, there's no moral judgment about that. And there's no nobility and cleaning your own toilet like mm. if you want to that's <laughs> totally fine but if you don't want to and you can figure out a way to do that i mean i cleaned houses and i scrubbed the nasty toilets of my acting class school to pay for you know subsidize the acting so yeah. it's like there's everyone's at different periods in their life there's going to be someone who's like hell yeah i'd love to be paid to clean your toilet like cool yes great one. It's just, it's all, we're all part of the, the web of life at different ways and different times of our lives. And that, I know someone who started a house cleaning business. So I do for too. them, that's, yeah. they'd love to, that's their hustle. Yeah. And, you know, we really appreciate you sharing that story of that person. Oh. And, you know, for the, our folks listening in gratitude for that person allowing us to share their story. We just want you to send them some well wishes, mm. some good intentions, some mm. good vibrations as a gratitude for getting the experience inspiration from their story. In signing off, mm-hmm. I know you don't know each person listening. We don't know when they're listening, what time of the year it is, but maybe what's a question that you want to invite them to start at on this process of change strategy and mastermind awesomeness? Are you telling yourself a story 
that's making you feel good? Or are you telling yourself a story that's making you feel bad? Mm. Because that's a choice. Mm. If, if you're feeling bad and upset, the pause and the question is, well, am I just telling myself a story that's making me feel bad? Mm. And if so, what's, can I spin a story that makes me feel better? Because mm. they're both just stories. What else could this mean? What's a different story I could tell if I'm feeling negative emotions around the story? Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah, Thank you so much. Yeah. Where can folks reach out to you to tell you how awesome you are and how much they appreciate this? Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> just leave a comment at my website, christineoller.com. Okay. Can That'll you spell be- it? K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E-O-L-L-E-R.com. Yes. All show notes are at tomrell.com slash Christine. If you just want to take the easy route, go to my show notes, boom, click. Are you on any social media? Oh, Tom. You know me. (laughs) Not right now. (laughs) Not right now? Okay. Well, you are via this. I mean, I have a, I have stuff up on YouTube. Okay. I have, I've staked my claim on all the spots, but yeah. I don't really do much. You don't there. use them. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I don't know ever. So email. Yeah, email. Send an email to Christine. <laughs> Tell her how much you appreciate it. Any questions? Check out Christine's mastermind group. I believe you have a free first chapter of your. Um, I have a lot of free stuff. Okay. So if you go to my website, I under resources. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can test drive my guidance and, you know, see if we would be a good match or just get some good stuff. What's your one that's the goal setting course? I don't, I don't have a goal setting course. Or planning your year. Oh, okay. That is, um, that's a, a little PDF. Okay. That they can purchase at the store. Yeah. And that is my, um, leading you through my approach to planning which is a little bit different than how some other people have explained it and it's a document where I sort of put everything down and there's other resources because there's a lot of great free stuff where it's like you know, if you want to go evaluate your past year and ask yourself questions for there's other, I send you to other places for that, but this is really like, okay, so you've got your goals, but let's look at this from the big picture perspective. Mm. And then how do you actually layer in things into your that year? Sounds exciting. So it's big picture and details. Do you have one that used to be on CDs that Miata gave out? Oh, feeding your focus. Yeah, that's there my, we go. That's the book I wrote. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm like, that's an audio book? It's an audio book. Oh. Yeah, I wrote a book. And then I I wanted people to hear my voice. Yeah. My excitement and my, you know, demands and, and the commands. Music. Yeah. I love the, the intro music. And yeah. My sister composed that. Oh, really? She's a musician. Yes. And, um, but I knew that if I went through traditional publishing, they would, at that time, back yeah. in the day. They would never let me do an audiobook uh, until a book was proven to be popular. Okay. That's how it used to work. Okay. Now it's like book, audiobook because of Audible. Yeah. But back in the day, it was like you, you would never be able to get the audiobook. So I self published it because oh my goodness. I meant it to be listened to. Because don't you want to listen to this yes. voice more? <laughs> of course you do. Yeah. And oh then there's the, the text of the book as well. I know I said I was signing off, but I lied. So you <laughs> yeah. said, I'm going to write this book. And then you just re- did the audio for your own book in your mm-hmm. house? Or what did, you, what did you do? Well, no. Um, so I had actually, because I, I acted for a decade. Yeah. And during that time, I actually studied voiceover privately uh, with Nancy Wolfson, who's an amazing coach, for a year. So I, you know, could rock a mic. Yeah. And um, took Pat Fraley's audiobook course. Like, yeah. And then I was like, mm, I like on camera better. Yeah. And so I never pursued it. And couple years later, when I was like, this is going to be an audiobook, uh, I was like, I can totally record it. And I actually, though, because it was, it's like eight hours. Yeah. So I'm not going to do that garage band, you know. So I hired uh, my friend, David Lawrence, who's like teaches voiceover and has done many, many demos. And I'm just like, hey, will you, uh, you know, direct it, edit it, produce it for me? And he's like, yeah. And it was funny because... <laughs> he's like okay um my schedule my schedule so 
How's like 10.30 at night? We literally <laughs> recorded the whole book in chunks from like 10.30 to 12.30. Wow. Because that's when his schedule. And I would just go over to his house and we'd crank it out in the studio. <laughs> How many sessions does it take? Um, There's four parts to the book. And my guess would be maybe it was five or six. Wow. You know? It's really good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I've never met somebody. I've always wanted to know who did an audiobook and that you did it yourself. That's inspiring. It is inspiring <laughs> because, but the thing about that project is that I, I had had people like my, I had a manager as an organizer and, you know, write a book, write a book. But I'm like, oh, there's solid books. I didn't want to write a book until I had a good idea. Yeah. And there was always something about just a book that wasn't lighting my fire. And then one day I was in Barnes and Noble and I was looking through design books and I'm like, this is great, but I need the designer going, okay, but here's what's good about this. And here's what's, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's audio. I want to point things out to people. I want them to hear my inflections when yeah. I say something and that it's exciting or, you know, and I was like, oh, okay. If I'm ever, I didn't have an idea for a book, but I was like, if I ever, I was, it's going to be an audio book. So I knew that. And then eventually the planets aligned where you get the idea. And I was like, I know what I want to write. I know how it's going to be. It's going to be in four sections. This would, but no one's asking me to do this. No one <laughs> paid me, but I knew I'm like, okay, this is, it's what I call a bridge to the next. You don't have to cross that bridge. You can have a fine life on this side of the bridge, but if you want your next evolution, you're going to have to cross that bridge. And for me, it's like, this is the book is the bridge. So I just bet on myself and trusted that instinct and sat down and spent many, many, many hours writing this book, not knowing if anyone would ever read it or if they if it would be helpful. I thought it would be helpful, but you know, but even if no one had ever read it, I knew I'm not going to get to my next evolution without it. So I have to write it for mm. me just across the bridge. Yes. And it was great because what it is basically, it's a dis, it's the accumulation of everything I had learned in those first 10 years of through acting and through organizing and through coaching. So it's literally like the first decade of my experience. And I'm getting ready probably to, I probably have another book in me around the subversive thoughts, Ooh. but it's brewing. It's not crystallized yet and I think that it will it's not it doesn't have to be an audiobook it, it, this one can be text but but nowadays you don't publish without having an audiobook yeah. oh the days that have changed it's not <laughs> fair as we were talking about before we yes. started it's like oh it's so much easier now <laughs> so it's it's not a book you can't buy the book you can only buy the audio um, yeah, I mean, you, you can buy it, download the audio, and you also get the text. You can have oh, the text. The text. So if you want to print it out and highlight it, but there's no like bound copy okay. of the book. I didn't make that available because I wanted people to listen. To listen to, I'm I very to, bossy. No, I have to say that normally I love audio. That's how I learn. Yeah, me too. But I don't like audio books because it doesn't feel like audio feels like someone's reading something oh mm -hmm. but but yours i thought was a course that's how organic it is oh yeah so it really feels like you're walking me through a process not reading something that was meant to be read i am fortunate i'm not quite sure how but i it was i was able to be able at that point in my life from that point on to write in my own voice like mm. i have my own voice i know how to write in a very colloquial we're just having a conversation style without the stiltedness of the language so i knew that i knew it would be good to listen to i just knew and i was writing for it to be heard and then i had seven people who were my my readers and to so i would send them a draft and then they would send me notes but they got the audio so i would record the draft and send them because I wanted them first to hear, to hear it. it. Yeah. And then you can also hear the words if you want to like note something. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, powerful. So I had basically recorded the whole book in draft form incrementally before I even got to the final recording. That's amazing. It was amazing. It was a lot of work done. Well, <laughs> I, I have to say in the fall, so I launched the Celebration Academy last January. 
And in the fall, I was listening to that leading up to the launch.、Oh, so really、cool. appreciate it. And、oh. little did I know, I'd never even connected until when we did the social media, the marketing workshops together a couple weeks ago.、Yeah. I looked, is this the same person? Oh my, oh gosh, my gosh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so appreciate that. Oh, that's so, that, made, that delights me. Yes. I mean, hearing stories like that or having come up and have people say, oh my God, your voice is in my head. I'm <laughs> just like, wow. It, it, It's so gratifying to the girl who was alone、mm. in her apartment, just going, okay, well, I'm, Spirit has told me, put this on paper, okay. So, yeah, it feels good to her. <laughs> I love that. And, folks, that's where, it's at. that's where it's at. When you create something, don't go for, I want it to be viral, I want it to get likes, shares. All that stuff will come if you do it first for yourself. And think of just that one person. One person. Oh my God. One person. I mean, if you affect one person, you're done. You're like, <laughs> all the rest is gravy. Because what does it mean to help someone along on their journey? Exactly. It's, it's just one person, you know? Have, have you heard that story of the person throwing、um, one of those sunfish or starfish back into the ocean? You heard of that story?、Oh, yeah, yeah. It, made, it made a difference that one. Exactly. Yeah, that's such a good one.、Um, there's also a video, I believe the kid's name is Dr. Fedora, but there's a, a video that went viral because he was just so excited. He made a video and he got five likes. <laughs> and it's so beautiful watching this kid be so genuinely excited about five likes. And we get all jaded about, like, I only had like a thousand subscribers. It's like, <laughs> You have a thousand people who like paid any attention to you at all? That's a miracle. <laughs> and it just, I love that video because that kid, I'm like, yeah, five likes. I was somewhere where somebody, we were in a room of a thousand people and they said, can five people please stand up? And they said, this is what you're disrespecting when you say I only got five likes.、Oh, brilliant. And it was like, exactly. If five people in this room, even out of a thousand, came up to you and said, I really appreciate you. You wouldn't go home like, yeah, but only five. <laughs> yeah. It would make your day. Exactly.、Yeah. <laughs> One of the weirdest experiences I had we were walking out of Disneyland at night, you know, parades done. And, you know, so you have a lot of people walking out, but there's also some people like walking the other way. I don't know why, but so there's a cross crowd going on.、Yeah. And I was with my husband and I were with his sister and her husband and their little child. And I happened to be kind of walking with.、Um, My husband's brother in law. I don't know what he is to me, but he's, he's a wonderful person to me. But anyway, we're just like walking along and chatted. And someone passed by us and said, Oh my God, that's Christine Aller. I'm like, you know, I'm not famous at all.、Uh, there's no way that someone would need to say it in that way. And he was like, Well, who? And we didn't see. So I was just like, Wow. But they were very like happy to see. It was the craziest. It was the craziest. Like, it's like, oh, so that's how that feels like. That's so amazing. <laughs> so random. <laughs> And yet, exactly on your path. Yeah. yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. You know how when folks say goodbye and then they go to the parking lot and then the real conversation happens in the parking lot? I feel like that's just what happened just right now. Right. <laughs> We're like, see you later. Oh, wait, oh. What, one more thing. That was awesome. I really appreciate this. So、I have a feeling we could sit here for many、yes. more hours, Tom. <laughs> yes. But that would not be fun for them. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This has been amazing. Absolutely. And I feel like this is the first time I've ever almost been pushed out of the screen. That was awesome. I try. I, I liked, I liked, I've been an actor for 10 years, so I know how to work、like, it. It was good. I'm like, oh, this is still coming. I'm almost <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> And I really feel like people got a lot of gems and insights out of this. So we really appreciate you bringing your time, your insight, and your awesomeness to the celebration.、Thank、I love what you're doing here. Oh, thank you. 110%. I appreciate that.、Mm-hmm. So, folks, show the love, spread the celebration, and let Christine know how much you appreciated this. TomRell.com slash Christine for all the links. We'll try to link that video you were talking about at the end so you can have all of that stuff. As always, we're wishing you peace and blessings.